You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. What did the text mean? The first of the five steps in the simple five step process is to look at what did the text mean. And similarly in our student exegesis assignments, we ask them to state the intended meaning for the ancient hearers, ideally in one sentence or maybe two, never more than fifty words. Students have two problems with this. They're not beset like biblical scholars are by difficulties of defining which ancient hearers will come back to that. Their first problem is being brief, saying anything in less than fifty words. I've got a sandblog post which addresses that issue. But the second is that they often tend to forget that the, the text ever had ancient hearers. Yet the Bible is a record of communicative acts, and communicative acts are always contextual. Communication always happens between two people or groups of people in particular contexts. Several of these Five Minute Bible podcasts address this issue. This one is the first of a little series that focuses particularly on this question. There are some holy books, like perhaps the Quran, that are believed to be timeless and decontextualized. There are others, like perhaps the I Ching, that are thought of as magical or quasi-magical, with their ability to address people in all sorts of times and places. But the Bible is just a complex communicative act. It's a very complex one, according to Christians, since it involves the Holy Spirit communicating with people in all sorts of times and places through human acts of communication at particular times and places. That's what some hermeneutes, and if the art and science of understanding is hermeneutics, then a person who does it is surely a hermeneut. That's what some hermeneutes call the double agency of scripture. Double agency sounds like a, a complicated and highfalutin idea, but it's really quite simple, and actually we're quite used to the notion of doubly agented texts in everyday life. All messages except ones that are written or transmitted through one of the modern newfangled electronic media have double agency. When a diplomat took a message from his king to another country. The message was delivered by the diplomat but on behalf of the king. It was presumed to be doubly agented. Of course, biblical scholars make the human agency of this double agency in itself more complicated because they notice that many biblical texts seem to have been edited thus adding layers to the human agenting of the text. But still, the notion that an Old Testament text was addressed to ancient Israelites and or ancient Judahites or Jews before it was addressed to modern Christians is surely not a difficult one to grasp. And yet students find it difficult. Because we Christians have become used to using the Bible as a band-aid. We grab a bit of Bible and we slap it on whatever issue or problem is in front of us today with no thought as to where this bit of Bible came from or what it was intended to do. It's a bit like someone who goes into the tool shed and grabs a saw and uses it to hammer in a nail. For a really neat example of how all this works out, try listening to my podcast on the lost and found parables in Luke 15 do listen to it next because the next podcast in this series is going to depend on the material in that one because as we'll see with that podcast I cheated and left out a significant element maybe as you listen to it you can think about what that might have been in the meanwhile I do hope that you discover the Bible as something much deeper and richer than just a band-aid bye for now God bless <laughs>